Hey buddy, is this is Fifty Four New Star, and remember this: this was our dungeon card game. If you don't, uh, go to search through my channel, or if you remember it on the Construct Two forums, um, also on the YouTube page. This was actually really something I was going to do. The issue was that the way I was going to do it was going to just take way too long and be too large. It was literally going to be just be too large. Um, but that was during the semester. So I literally had way too much going on. So now i fixed it to where we actually don't need 50 bazillion cards. What we need is one card. Well, specifically, you still need a bazillion cards, but you don't exactly need to do anything specific to them unless you want to actually reference them. And then in which case you actually, you actually need to do a ton of code, but you don't have to do a lot in the form of a bunch of assets and we'll get to that a little bit later so this is all we have to deal now now the only issue that we have now is for the player cards because you actually have to choose your player cards um, so if you click like a button here and maybe it'll pop up a different screen saying hey you have like 20 cards you choose from them or you set random you know variables for both cards but I want to show you guys something real quick so these are a bunch of actual Hearthstone cards that I just, um, you can find them on the internet and like, like literally a whole bunch of blocks and then I just made them into sprites. I just took the solid color behind it, turned to it, turned it into opacity and then cl cut it up into sprites. So here they are as sprites. And then I just reference each image and I actually originally thought of this, but I thought it would be totally different. It's not. It's really, really easy. So I'm gonna put this down below so you guys can download it, but this is really what you need to know. Okay, so we have our global numbers. We have a deck. So we have a card deck or a hand of cards. It's about 10 cards. Specifically, the cards right here in this animation is about 21. Um, I would have to go in and uh, set the return uh, set return value to choose, uh, and it says one through ten. I would actually have to set that to eleven, twelve, you know, all the way up to twenty-one. That way, we can choose all the cards there. But one through ten is fine, and it will show us what we need to like know for this example. So on ran. So that basically means on variable running. When this variable is running, you're going to choose between one through 10, and then you're gonna display this information or not. But we want to display it. So uh, on top of a big red button, or in this case, this big red button is called Sprite 18, we're gonna call RAN. So we uh, ran a function called RAM, which basically is, is basically just, hey, run something in the background, and then give me the information that I need to know. So we ran it. And then we say, okay, um, we want to set enemy card to function return value. Remember, this fun this uh, function is a set of a return value. So whatever that return value is, remember it runs. We tell it to run. It runs it. It then returns with, hey, this is what it spat out at me. You deal with this. So it spat out a number, and we're gonna send that number to a global variable called enemy card. So we said, okay, this, um, you know, we have a little turn wheel in the back. It spits out a number, say four. Somebody gets that number four, hands it to another guy and says, here, you deal with it. That guy then writes on a sheet of paper four, and in that sheet of paper, it says, okay, we need f um, number four th of this. So of this would be uh, basically an enemy card. So we have a list of enemy cards, one through 21, but specifically one through 10. And we're gonna say, okay, um, this item, we need the number fourth, number four. We need the fourth one. So when we click it, we're gonna pull number four. We're gonna set that sprite deck to a specific object, and this specific object would be the big green uh, square in the middle of the, uh, of the game board. And then what we're gonna do is set enemy card number to enemy card. So enemy card number, um, blah, 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 
is basically it's handing, uh, well this gets a little repetitive, but it allows us to do with stuff with different variables. I may edit this part. Um, it's specifically the enemy card, a number um, to enemy card. Yeah, it's kind of repetitive, but I'm gonna leave it in there for now. Um, so enemy card number to enemy card, that's basically saying, hey, uh, one variable, I want you to clone this variable, and then this, um, where you're going to be setting this text to enemy card number. So one variable is maintaining everything on the cards and then the other variable is going to be copying it and then set, uh, sending it to a text box which will then set um, text to which is going to clone whatever it's told uh, to clone in which case it's the variable um, from um, the uh, function return value. Now you don't have to do this. You can literally just uh, destroy the enemy card number and then just set the text, uh, set text to enemy card and you'd be done with it. So you don't need that repetitive function in it. You can actually erase one line of code. And then we're gonna set this, uh, the actual card, set animation to frame, To enemy card, so basically we ran a very um, a background function, and it shoots out a number. That number is now sent to a uh, global variable called enemy card. Then that pack of cards runs that number. So that set that animation to the frame of enemy card. So the enemy card is suddenly uh, five or it's three, it's gonna, it, that deck of cards is gonna say, okay, that's one, two, three, here's the third card, or one, two, three, up to 18, here's the 18th card. So it's gonna choose that. Now specifically how you do that, and I can actually re redo it right here, is we're gonna choose our deck of cards. Now remember, this is just an icon, but it has a bunch of animations or sprites behind it, and we're, I'm gonna get to that, uh, a little something important that you need to know. And I'm gonna click on this card, and then I'm going to set animation. So we want to look for uh, a blue line All right here. Uh, the little text that says appearance or animations. We want something called animation and it says set animation. We don't want set animation. We want to set a frame. And then we want to set a frame to system, enemy card, done. So that basically references whatever number enemy card is. Now, on the actual uh, list or sprites within this, this is specifically an animated uh, sprite, but we're not letting it like do a run animation or a change card animation. What we're doing it is just using it as an archive, um, so we're not referencing so many uh, things um, on screen at all. So what you want to do is set speed to zero, loop, no, repeat count one, or you can set that to zero, uh, repeat zero, ping pong, no. So this literally, when you play it, so we're gonna run the game, make it big screen, I'm gonna click my card. So I choose Feral Rat, and its power is five, or its attack. It's right there. And now I'm going to choose, uh, here's a big red button, I'm gonna click it. Oh no, here's number one. Um, it's some sort of random card. I haven't set in variables for the attacks or anything like that yet. But since it's number four, I'm referencing um, the number that is chosen and not exactly the attack number. We'll deal with that later, but this kind of cuts down on our coding. Because even though, because before we had to literally, uh, if we had 20 cards in a deck, we literally had to say, okay, um, uh, you know, press a button, it will randomly put a number, and then we literally had to reference every single number um, or, and every single card. So we literally had 20 lines of code referencing 20 cards. We don't have to do that. Um, at this point, all we have to do, set a random variable. Now, if that variable equals a, you know, um, a particular card, because now we can reference the card based on the line that it is in from the weakest to the most powerful. So, number four is some sort of lightning bolt. 
Um, we have feral, feral Spirit. So Feral Spirit is number 10. Uh, we have number 5. Uh, you know, for some reason at number 3 and I'm a level 1 uh, in my particular pack. Um, it will literally just decimate my little feral rat from the wild woods. Now I'll be I'll be replacing my deck with specifically the same cards, so that we can like have a more specific battle. But you know, if I choose, hey, uh... <sighs> guys, I'm kind of tired. Um, a green mage, and he's level two with an attack of five. I would literally be decimated by the feral spirit, which is level three and would have some sort of attack. So. So kind of building up on this guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little bit, um, it's an update. I hope to kind of finish this before December, hopefully. Um, so you can watch it here or on the Sakara page. Uh, this video won't be on the Sakara page. Uh, a more full on episode or tutorial will be on the Sakara page. They kind of like uh, full blown, you know, huge tutorials. So I've been working on two or three of those. That's why you haven't seen many videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Also, comment down below what other tutorials you would like. I'm going to be doing a Unity tutorial in January using, um, not specifically coding, but using uh, systems like Playmaker or other similar systems to where it's easier for a person who's new in the, in the coding to use a drag and drop system, learn coding on the way, and then we'll start actually writing some code, hopefully in the summer to fall of next year, building on some really, really awesome video games. So again, guys, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I want to hear what you think about this, what you would like to see in it, any other type of video games. And I'll see you guys in the next video.